welcome back to my channel. I'm Amber. Um, today I wanted to talk about the Apple White Trilogy, specifically number two and three, because those are the ones I haven't read. Uh, these are fantastic. They're great. Um, number two, Apple White's at Wits End got like, I gave it a 4.5 stars. There were a few things that I wasn't really happy about, like 4.5, 4.75. Apple White's Coast to Coast, the third book, is more of a solid 4 to solid 4.25. I really liked them. I really liked all of them. I thought they were really good. I'm going to try to make this really quick. I've tried filming this video several times and it, it was, I didn't quite express what I wanted to express and I rambled on for 20 or 30 minutes and I, I, I think I just need to like pull back and just try to be brief and rethink my approach to how I want to review these books. Um, let's start with Apple Whites at Wit's End. This was hilarious. They, I should say both of these um, books had me just cackling in places. They have these great lines. Um, I absolutely adore the writing. I adore the characters. That's one thing I really love about um, I, and I should have all the books in my hands for this. Uh, that's one thing I love about Stephanie S. Tolan's writing is she writes these fantastic characters. She writes these wholesome family moments. Um, the characters are quirky and flawed and they're real. Um, and I just, I love them. And I love that I get a progression. E.D. Applewhite, one of the um, points of view. So there are two points of view. E.D. Applewhite and Jake Semple. Um, and I love that E.D., we get a sense of her progressing in these two books. She goes from hyper-organized, um, bordering on OCD and the potential for developing mental illness around this later on in life, to she's pulling back she's learning to deep to be flexible she's learning to go with the flow she's still not comfortable with it and she's still very much someone who wants to be in control wants to know what's going to go on um but in the third book she's she's pulling back from that a little and she's allowing herself to have experiences um in this we also learn about hal applewhite He's not just some recluse who's being a recluse, you know, to gain attention. He has social anxiety, what I would describe as social anxiety. He has some very real, very potent uh, social anxiety. The, the thought of, um, in the second one, helping run a summer camp and be around new people and be around campers has him running to throw up, has him breaking out in a sweat. He's... He, he's a mess. In the third book, he's still a mess, but he's learning, he's, he's coping with it a lot better. Um, and he's just really thriving and excelling, even though it's in very, what we would consider very small ways. Um, and I think it's handled very, very well. Um, I'm gonna go back to this book now, <laughs> going back and forth. Applewoods at Wits End, the Applewhites lose all their money. Um, their estate manager embezzles it all. So they decide to run a summer camp. Um, and people pay, you know, for their kids to be at the summer camp. So that's part, part of a way that they're, um, you know, paying their bills is through the summer camp. And they have these seven campers who are just hilarious. And um, as soon as the camp starts... Uh, they start notice that there's someone sneaking around and um, there's a mysterious car and so like what's going on and their dad is receiving threatening messages about you know health code violations and building code violations and you know stuff like that and um, and so the, the teenagers take it upon themselves to like trap this person and so they're weaving they're weaving nets and, and traps in the, the woods around the farm um, around the summer camp out of poison ivy and out of green briar, which is like a thorny plant. They're, they're, uh, planning traps for, you know, with the goats and, um, a, a 
twins end up coming to, you know, or at the summer camp as campers. And one of them shaves her hair into a mohawk to, to match Jake. And it's just so cute. And there's so much growth that happens and the shenanigans that they get up to is just fantastic. And I, I really loved this one. It was really wholesome. Um, this Applewhite's Coast to Coast, um, who doesn't love, like, I mean, a lot of people don't like road trip, um, narratives, but I, I loved this road trip narrative. They're going from coast to coast. Literally, they drive from their, their home in, um, they join a, a creative competition, uh, of like, you know, who has the best creative education homeschooling system or whatever, uh, and whoever wins, um, gets a, a grant and a bunch of money or whatever. So they drive, they drive to the coast in North Carolina where they live, and then they head out west to California. And along the way, they're given challenges in specific locations. And it's just hilarious and fun. And they're in these two big buses, and it's just a large group of people trying to, like, you know, find places to sleep at night and uh, coexist. And it's everything I wanted in like a cross country travel and like having being creative and learning and um the i will say the only problem i did have with this book was it deals with um melody uh melody a another bad kid is invited to join the apple whites so they, they invite her to to join them um, on this trip because they're hoping to do for her like they did for Jake and, and help him realize his passion, help him realize his talent, help him figure out why he's trying, why he's, you know, acting up and help him gain some power, gain some, some control in his life. Um, but for her, this never happens because she manipulates and sabotages and uses them the whole time. Her goal, um, Along the way, they have to um, put in, after each challenge, they have to submit a video and, you know, America votes on it and there's like a ranking of who's best. Melody's whole goal is to win the money because um, each participant um, in the winning group gets a specific amount of money. Um, she just wants the money. And there are some very intense situations that occur that she is never held accountable for. Um, the videos that she puts up behind the Apple White's back in their name, um, just, I think slander might be the right term. Yeah, slander the Apple Whites. They just, they show them at their worst. She's showing them at their worst and she's painting herself as this hero, as this, this person who's just dealing with this dysfunction and who's, who's saving the day. Um, when really she's the one causing the problems. And it's just super frustrating because she's never held accountable for that. She's never held accountable for ruining their reputations or, you know, you know, ruining their reputations or causing problems or stealing one of the buses or anything. In the end, she's offered a, in, an internship, a paid internship with a television network who's going to use her talents of manipulation for their own like views and, and you know, their, their work. And it just, disgusted me it, it it made me feel icky um and that, that sounds so stupid and silly say like it made me feel icky but it made me realize that I emotionally and uh intellectually don't do well with those kinds of stories with with stories dealing with highly manipulative people who don't get called out for it who don't face the consequences for their actions that doesn't work for me that's not something i want to read that's something i know i need to avoid in the future and so for me for this as much as i loved this book there was that certain amount of manipulation in the background that um i kept thinking oh they're gonna call her out for it oh they're gonna figure it out and call her out for it oh they're gonna you know she's gonna get a consequence nothing literally nothing and so that's what dinged this the hardest for me. Like, was it enjoyable? Oh yeah. Will I reread it? Oh yeah. But, um, I don't know. I just, I'm frustrated, but I mean, I'm glad I read the trilogy. I so, so, so enjoyed it. Like the Surviving the Apple Whites is 
always been, it's, it's one of my all time favorites. I reread it all the time. Like it's one of those go-tos when I'm, I'm not feeling good and I want to feel better and I want to get back into reading. I go to it and it just, it helps me, you know, kick back into reading and feel better. Um, and so, yeah, I just, I'm excited that I'm hoping someday to add these to my collection. I'm not in a hurry. I'm not in a rush. Um, they're library books. So I have to return them to the library now. But yeah, thanks for, thanks for listening to me. Thanks for, um, you know, listening to me ramble. Uh, this series has great pets. There's Winston the dog and there's, you know, a Wolfbane and, and Witch Hazel, um, called Wolfie and Hazel, uh, that are goats. Um, and there's these side characters like Billy Bones from the third book and like, you know, the Ginger Twins from the second book. And then Gavin Deswami, who's in all of them, who's like this, this guru, um, for Lucille, one of the Apple Whites. And it's just, they're the side characters. She just knows how to write a character that you fall in love with. So anyway, I'm, I'm done talking. I really am. Promise. Trust me. <laughs> I will talk to you all next time. Have a great day. Bye.